Hello, and welcome to episode 9 of Chemistry in 15 Minutes or Less. My name is Audra, and this review lesson is on chapters 6 and 7, part 2, Ionic Compounds and Hydrates. The first thing we need to go over is how to name main group monatomic ions. We have to do both cations and anions. Now, cations, you take the name of the element, and you follow it up with ion. These ones are pretty simple, so this will give you something like calcium ion or lithium ion. The anion, however, will take the root of the element, add the suffix "-ide", and then follow it with ion. This would be something like, say, the oxide ion, chloride ion. Now, the symbols for these are pretty simple. You take the atomic symbol, and you take the charge as a superscript. So calcium would be something like Ca with a 2 plus charge, lithium a lot with a plus charge, <clears throat> oxygen would be O, 2 minus charge, and chlorine would be Cl minus 1. Now, as far as cations go, most elements only have one available ion. The issue comes in the middle of the table in the transition metals, because those can often have two or even three different types of ions. However, you will need to memorize a couple of specific transition elements that only have one charge. Zinc, cadmium, germanium, silver, and aluminum. Now, zinc has a two plus charge. Cadmium also has a two plus charge. So does germanium. Aluminum you treat as a 1 plus charge. It is important to note, silver does technically have a 2 plus ion, but it is so very uncommon we just treat it like it only has one. And aluminum has a 3 plus charge. To continue further with naming, we also need to talk about the difference between a stock naming system and the classical naming system. Now in the stock naming system, you take the element name and you put the charges, Roman numerals, in parentheses if the cation has more than one available. The classical naming system, on the other hand, uses suffixes to show which one has the lower or higher charge. You use the prefix ic for the higher charge, and ous for the lower charge. So in the stock system, to give you a couple of examples of the ones you have to memorize, copper 1, copper 2, iron 2, iron 3, tin 2, tin 4, and then lead 2, and lead 4. Now for the classical naming system, you do need to know both the classical and the stock naming for all of these listed. So copper 1 would be called cuprous, copper 2, cupric. Iron, ferrous, because it's based off of the atomic symbol, and iron 3 would be ferric. Tin would be stannous, stannic, sorry, and lead would be plumbus, plumbic. And the reason for some of these weird ones is because it's based off of the atomic symbol. So, ferrous, Stanic, plumbus. Here's just what they look like with the number of charges. You will have to memorize everything you see here, so I'll just give you a second with it. Now the next thing we do need to talk about is how to balance charges in an ionic compound. Not every single one of them is going to be just as easy as sodium chloride, where it's sodium has a plus one charge, chloride has a minus one charge, and they just balance out for sodium chloride. 
So let's do an example of something that's a little more difficult. Aluminum oxide. As you know, aluminum has a 3 plus charge, and oxygen has a 2 minus charge. So there is a way of crossing over to do it, but that doesn't always work. So you have the aluminum, 3 plus, oxygen, 2 minus. Generally, you can just figure this out, because they both need to come to the same value. Which means there's six positive charges and six negative charges in this case, because you just cross-multiply them pretty much. That will work most of the time. That'll give you your charge, meaning to balance it out and make it electrically neutral. That would be aluminum oxide. Now this is not when we talked about naming hydrates, but I figured I'd go ahead and get it into this video. A hydrate is just an ionic compound that contains water. So for naming them, what you have to do is you have to start with the anhydrous ionic compound. Anhydrous just means without water. Add a prefix, depending on how much water there is, and then hydrate. An example of this would be something like cupric sulfate pentahydrate. Because you would write it like this. Now that is a polyatomic ion, which we'll talk about in the next chapter, but this is just an example of its times however much water, and I need a lot of time in the next video. Some things you do need to memorize, however, for hydrates are the prefixes, and these are super, super, super critical to the rest of chemistry because we use them all the time. Monohydrate means there's one water. Dihydrate is two. Tri is three. Tetra is four. Penta is five. Hexa six. Hepta is seven. Octa is eight. Nona is nine. And Deca is ten. Now, to close this out, I'm going to throw some more definitions around that we used during this chapter. We're going to talk about isoelectric, binary compound, hydride, and carbide. Now, something that is isoelectric has the same electron configuration as another atom or ion. A binary compound is any compound that is composed of two elements. And a hydride is hydrogen bonded with a metal, and a carbide is carbon bonded with a metal. And that should conclude episode 9 of Chemistry in 15 minutes or less. Feel free to leave questions or suggestions in the comments below, and be sure to follow the in-video links, check out the playlist, or head over to my channel for more videos on Chemistry Review. As always, I hope this is helpful, and have a great day.